I live about eight hours away from one of the most beautiful hiking trails in the world. Yet up until now, I had never hiked it. The West Coast Trail is a 75 kilometer multi-day backpacking route that hugs the west coast of Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada. The West Coast Trail is made up of ancient paths that the First Nations used to use for trade and travel up and down the island. As the years passed and the island developed, the trail was gradually abandoned for more efficient routes until it eventually became part of Canada's National Park Reserve. To this day, the West Coast Trail draws hikers from around the world to the Pacific Northwest. In fact, the hike is so sought after, you have to make a reservation to hike it a year in advance. After years of trying to score a ticket for myself, I finally got a spot. This is my journey of hiking the West Coast Trail. Boarding the ferry to Vancouver Island, I was a bit nervous. I was about to embark on the longest hike that I'd ever done by far, and I was doing it alone. From the ferry, I caught one of the jankiest buses that I think I've ever been on. A 90 minute bumpy ride and possibly a pop tire later, we arrived at the trailhead. After checking in with Parks Canada, they gave us an update on the trail and then they sent us on our way. And so it begins you guys, out onto the beach. I'm just leaving the orientation and uh, this is the beginning of the hike. Let's go. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I am a bit nervous for multiple reasons. One, this is definitely the biggest hike that I've ever done, like by far. Number two is that uh, it's six days out in the wilderness. And I mean, just going camping, like after a few days, you kind of get tired and you're ready to like go home and sleep in your own bed. I do think there's value in pushing yourself and doing scary things. And uh, I know on the other side, once you finish it, I'd be really proud of myself. So until then, let's keep on trekking. Right after I finished recording that bit, I ran into two people that I met on the bus to the trail, Pam and Byron. Little did I know that I would end up hiking the next 70 kilometers with them. Twelve K in, 63 K to go. I've already soaked my shoes. No! <laughs> we landed at Darling River campsite around 6 p.m just enough time to find a spot, set up camp, and do a bit of exploring. This is like a private grotto. No one's around. Oh my gosh. As a fairly new backpacker, one of the biggest question marks for me about the hike was how I was going to stay hydrated and how I was going to stay fed. First off, water. That was actually pretty easy. There are hundreds of streams along the trail that you can pull from, so long as you have a water filter. Food gets a bit more complicated, as I noticed that everyone really has their own theory about it. For me, what I found worked really well were dehydrated meals. They require little to no cleanup, and all you have to do at the end of a long hiking day is boil some water to have a hearty meal. Well, there it is, you guys. Day one is complete. I'm pretty sore. 15K with a 45, 50 pound bag is pretty heavy. I'm really thankful to have met Byron and Pam. They are wonderful, and it's so nice to have other hiking buddies out on the trail with me. It makes the trail more enjoyable, it makes you feel a bit safer from the bears and the cougars. It's just super nice to have someone to chat to while you're out there. All right, we're on to day two. Are you guys excited? 100%. 100%. It's Canada Day, which is super fun that we're out here on Canada Day. And uh, yeah, should be a good day. You are my favorite place to go. You're at the end of my favorite road. So this is definitely the biggest ladder that we've done so far. We've got 28 rungs here. Check this out. Let us uh, get moving. You are my favorite shade of rose A flower bed on my face
Parks Canada said that bears mainly come down to the beach and feet, which is a fairly safe spot to have an encounter because you have lots of space between you and the bear. They always say, space is safe. One thing that I'm really, really digging so far about the trail is the variety that it hits you with. Six days of hiking could get pretty tedious if things weren't switching up. We are just about done day two. We have a few more meters to push and then we're arriving at the campsite. My feet did start to hurt a bit more today. Actually, I don't know if you would really want to look at my feet, but I got blister tape on some of my toes. They're getting a bit raw. I think everything just has a general soreness to it. That's gonna come with carrying a 45 pound pack for kilometers on end, uh, but it's not an unbearable soreness. It's not something that I have to tap out or anything like that. So when it comes to camping along the West Coast Trail, you are bombarded with options. There are a lot of different campsites, so you really do get to choose whichever ones work best with your hiking schedule and whichever ones you think look the coolest. Oh my gosh, what an amazing way to end off a day of hiking. I am so stoked. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I spent the rest of my day swimming in the waterfall and doing some stretches to hopefully loosen up for the tough days to come. I've got to say, the mornings that we experienced along the West Coast Trail were some of my favorite. Stepping out of your tent into the early morning mist and packing up camp with the waves crashing against the shore is pretty hard to beat. So here we are, day three on the West Coast Trail. And today is gonna to be a bit of a doozy. Today was set to be our longest hiking day yet. So thank goodness for a restful morning. We were on the trail by 6.30 AM and we were set to hike 24 kilometers. If I lose my way, will I know where to find you? Will I know where to find you? Definitely not the worst spot for a water break, but uh, back on the trail, and they keep crushing it. So we're off the beach and back into the trails, and I can already tell that this is getting more technical. Things are more garbled, the boardwalks are not in pristine condition, let's just put it at that. After about 10 kilometers of hiking, we made it to Knit Nat Narrows, another iconic spot along the trail. So we have made it to the first ferry crossing. Yoo-hoo! Here, a ferry picked us up and took us across the inlet to the Crab Shack, a well-known pit stop along the trail, known for its, well, you guessed it, crab. <clears throat> so right here, there is a cage with a bunch of crabs. And uh, whenever you order crab here, they will uh, just yank the cage up, pull a crab out, seriously, ocean to table. Perks of hiking with people who like seafood. I could have my egg wrap and still get the picture. <laughs> the Crab Shack is a family-run business by a family from the Dititat First Nations. They're one of the three First Nations groups alongside the Pachidat and the Huayat peoples where the West Coast Trail runs through their traditional land that they've inhabited for over 4,000 years. Hiking the trail with that history in mind makes it all the more special. are still trekking along today. We've spent a lot of time on the beach. Another cool thing that I should probably mention are these fancy black things on my legs. No, they are not leg warmers, I swear. They're called gaiters. They protect your ankles and your shins and then make sure no sand or rocks or anything go inside your shoe. That's super handy so you don't have to keep emptying your shoe. Sand and rocks get in there and they can make blisters if you keep walking on it. So gaiters are super handy. So 
So we made it to the Carmana Lighthouse straight, beaming down sun, it's so hot. Massive ladders, I didn't even film it. I was just trying to get through it. The trail is not easy. <laughs> if you couldn't tell in that last clip, the trail was definitely beginning to humble me. It's not that I took the trail for granted or thought it was super easy, but up until this point, it really hadn't challenged me. So we're at camp for the night. It was a long, long day. It was 24 kilometers total, I believe. Yeah, I don't know if I would recommend doing that all in one go. Now, although yesterday was difficult, that wasn't going to stop us from taping up the feet, crossing some rivers, and getting ready to hike another day. Welcome to day four on the West Coast Trail. No more giant days ahead of us like we had yesterday. However, the next 12 kilometers are gonna be technical. I'm feeling pretty good today. The toes are starting to form blisters, kind of on my pinky toes. It's kind of funny, every day I seem to be progressively adding more and more tape. But yeah, aside from that, body's holding up well. So let's uh, continue pushing. Today was another day with lots of beach hiking. For a lot of the West Coast Trail, there is a beach route and an inland route. And we have opted to take the beach route most of the times when available and when the tide would allow us to do so. So this is one of those areas that is most definitely impassable at high tide. We had to check the map to make sure that we could go this way. If we did not check the tide tables, we would have to hike kilometers back that way to get up onto land. There were two main reasons we would usually choose to hike along the beach. One is that you move a lot faster. The kilometers can definitely be a bit slow going when you're in the forest. The second being, that's kind of what the trail is known for. It's a coastal trail and it's definitely most beautiful hike that way. So this is another one of those spots on the trail that could use a little maintenance. After picking our way through some gnarly mud bogs along the trail, we finally made it to the Cullite Creek campsite. This was another one of the prettier campsites along the trail. We had our own private cove and our own private swimming hole. The perfect spot to take a shower because you don't want to offend on the trail. After showering up, I went down to the beach to cook myself some dinner. And at this point, I was feeling pretty sore. It seemed like the days upon days of hiking with a heavy bag on my back were starting to wear on me. And although we were getting close to the end, we still had a full 25 kilometers to go. I remember feeling heavy this morning. Everything we had to do to leave camp just felt a bit more difficult, and I was extremely tired. To leave the ravine that we had been camping in, we had to climb nine of the steepest and tallest ladders that we had encountered this entire trip. So this was the perfect morning to not be feeling it. I distinctly remember walking through this portion of the trail, trying to figure out where on earth I could possibly take a nap. Judging by the landscape of the trail, I hope you can tell how tired I was feeling. Let's just say it was not conducive to napping. After spending the morning hiking through the forest, the trail eventually spit us out onto the ocean shelf, and this ended up being some of my favorite hiking throughout the entire trail. The kilometers were fast, you got a nice cool breeze coming off the ocean, and it was beyond scenic. So we've made it to the infamous boulder fields. That is a lot of boulders. The boulder fields portion of the hike was probably the most unique part throughout the entire trail. Some of the boulders that we had to go around were literally the size of small cars. It was really fun to pick your way through the rocks. As it's a scramble, there was no set trail, so in many ways, it was like a choose your own adventure. One thing that I have to mention though, is that if it was raining, I would not go this way. These rocks were super dry when we took them as it hadn't rained in days, but if these things were slippery, I think that would be a death trap. So far, the boulder scramble is great. I honestly prefer this much more compared to like the muddy trail in bad condition. This is a lot more enjoyable. I see the campsite, I'm ready to go get set up and eat some food. Our final full day completed. Fun fact. Port Renfrew is like right over there, which is where we're actually going to leave the trail. So we can see civilization. We're just not quite there yet. 
So we're headed out at Thrasher's Cove. We got a five kilometer hike back to the Gordon River Ferry. And then we are done the hike. We're kilometer 70 out of 75. It's been a slog, but uh, we can see the finish line. We were so close to the finish line at this point that we could basically taste it. That being said, these final five kilometers were some of the most challenging. We had to climb a massive gain in elevation, going from the ocean all the way to the highest point on the trail before dropping back down to the ocean again. I think we are likely making our final push out of the trail right now. There hasn't been any markers for the past few kilometers, but I would hedge my bets that we're about kilometer 74. So one left, one to go. <laughs> so we've made it down the final ladder all the way up there. Raise the buoy and that lets the ferry operator know to come pick us up and uh, we're golden. We're out of here, 75K in the bag. It's now been six months since I finished hiking the West Coast Trail. There's no doubt that this is one of the coolest trips that I had ever taken. The memories that I made and the people that I met will not be forgotten. Beyond the trail just being extremely beautiful, I think so much of the joy and amazement that I felt hiking the trail came from doing something that pushed me out of my comfort zone. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I am a bit nervous. This is definitely the biggest hike that I've ever done. If the trail was easy, it still would have been a cool trip, but I don't think I would have appreciated it as much as I did. Hiking 75 kilometers up and down ladders, across cable cars, and over a 4,000 year old trail was far from easy, but man, was it worth it.